Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a popular hexagon, also known as honeycomb shelves. First things first, you're going to want to gather all your materials as this build can go pretty quickly if you have everything ready to go. project I'm using a miter saw you can also use a circular saw if that's what you have on hand you're gonna want to set the degree of cut to 30 degrees that's gonna be the cut that you're gonna be using for every slice that you make on this one keep in mind three things when you're starting out this project and that's gonna be cut measure then flip if you measure out all six boards at nine inches before you make any cuts you're gonna end up with short boards because you're not accounting for the wood that you lose during each cut. I like to use a combination or speed square to make my guidelines so that I can visually see that each line is actually straight. You'll also wanna make sure that you're flipping the board each time. Your angled cuts should all fall on the same plane of your board. Repeat this process until you have six 9 inch boards with 30 degree angle cuts on each end. Now you're ready to sand. I like to use 150 grit sandpaper with a random orbital sander. And the reason I like a random orbital sander is because it does the job of removing any imperfections in the wood and smoothing it out really well. But it also doesn't leave any scratch marks in the wood and that's really going to matter when it's time to apply that stain at the end. Once you're done sanding, you'll want to grab your wood glue and apply a thin layer of glue on the end grain sides of each board. Allow the glue a few minutes to dry completely. By taking this step, you're clogging the end grain pores and keeping them from absorbing all the glue when it comes time to glue up your project. This will leave you with a much stronger bond in the end. Once your boards are dry, you're going to want to line up all six boards with the angle cuts down. Once your boards are lined up straight, you'll take your painter's tape or your masking tape and apply one long strip down the length of the boards. Make sure this tape is secured well. Now flip your boards in line to expose the angled cut sides. Apply a generous amount of glue between each board and on both end pieces. Now here's the fun part. Pull both sides together, making sure as you go, each board stacks up on one another and tape it close. At this time, use a damp cloth and wipe off any of the excess glue squeeze out. This will save you so much time later when it comes time to sand the project down. ratchet strap to keep your piece tightly secured while it dries. Use your 
brad nail gun to drive two nails into each board and keep them well attached. You see that glue that I let dry? Don't do that. Once you've allowed your piece to fully dry, use your wood filler to fill any gaps in the joints and cover any brad nail holes. Using the same 150 grit sandpaper and random orbital sander, you're going to want to sand off any of the excess wood filler and glue that you have and get this piece ready for stain. Select your stain of choice. I personally like to use Verithane's wood stains and I also like to use a wipe on method when applying the stain. Okay, what are we doing now? We're doing the ceiling uh -huh. and the shelves. Good job. For these shelves, I like to use a water-based polyurethane in a satin finish. And I usually like to use water-based just because they're considered to be less toxic. These shelves are going to be hung indoors, so they're not going to be exposed to a whole lot of moisture. But if I was doing an outdoor project or hanging these shelves outdoors somewhere, I would probably use more of an oil-based polyurethane. Once your sealant is dry, then you can install your sawtooth hanger. You'll want to hang these shelves on studs in the wall just because once you put them up and you add things to it, you're adding weight. If you can't find the stud or you choose to hang it somewhere where there's not a stud, then definitely use some drywall anchor. Now have some fun and decorate. Enjoy! For watching this video if it helped you at all hit that like button subscribe to the channel for more DIY tutorials in the future